Hello, gentle gamers. This is Avgardian, welcoming you back to Out of the Dark Basel 24 with a brand new series. This is our Negro League tour through history, I guess I could call it for right now, um, where we have disabled the color barrier, which means that uh, colored players, as they were called at the time, can be added into your Major League roster. Uh, and, yeah, um, this also weirdly means there's also not a reverse color barrier either, which means that white players could also play in the Negro Leagues, uh, which is definitely interesting. That is for certain. Um, oh, what does this mean? Yeah, disable that stuff there, right there. Um... <clears throat> so, let's have a chat about what our objectives are in this particular series. This is a look at baseball in 1920 and seeing what would have happened in the major leagues if integration happened immediately. Now, I could have gone back to the dawn of time um, and started from the very beginning again. There's a couple reasons why I did. First, a lot of the most uh, notable First of all, the Negro Leagues weren't that well established in the past. Um, if I take a quick look at when they had started, um, the official Negro National League starts in 1920. Um, although there were individual teams, like barnstorming teams before that, um, the first league was uh, in 1920, although there was a recognized team that was considered a minor league uh, earlier than that. So, so this is all about trying to figure out well, how baseball history would have changed if the Negro Leagues had been integrated from the start and that players can go where they want to go. And we'll see what happens. Um, before we dive into that, a few other housekeeping items. The first is something you probably haven't heard, which is the sound from my computer. Um, I fucked around with OBS settings and added a noise suppression filter, so hopefully the only, should, the only thing you should be able to hear is my voice. Um, now, if that bothers you, I guess you could mute it, but then I, I, I don't know if they think this would be a very engaging video, but sure. Um, I'm also playing as manager and general manager, and this is mostly because if I'm only GMing early on in Major League history when there is no free agency, there would be a whole lot to see. I've also turned off the Rule 5 draft. Um, the real Rule 5 draft began, I want to say like in the 60s? Let me see here. Rule 5 draft. Uh, it was created in 1959. So, oh no, here it is. That's been every year since 1920. Bullshit. I'm changing my mind then. I thought it was much more recent than that. The more you know, guys, the more you know. Let's turn that Rule 5 draft right back on. Uh, here we go. There we go. That's cool. Uh, why are we doing the All-Star teams in, nine, in spring? What? I turned on the All-Star game because I like the All-Star game, but like... Why would I schedule it now? What? Um, I'm confused. How can we be announcing the All-Star teams before the game actually starts? No, 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 no. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to try turning it back on once the season has actually started. 
Um, okay. Oh, you know what it might be? I don't think there is a... Oh, no, there are two different links. Yeah, we definitely could do that. Anyway. Um, I'm getting horribly sidetracked. If that isn't an Avi uh, trademark for my series, then I don't know what would be. So, let's talk about what we're trying to do in this series. For us, personally. We're trying to win championships. Um, I think what worked really well in the through history is the whole um, 10 years per team. I think that feels pretty good. Um... But I'm not going to play through the entirety of Major League history. Um, I'm going to play to 1980. Um, by 1980, most of the former Negro Leaguers are either well-established... Um, actually, I wonder when the Negro Leagues disbanded. Um, I should have done this before then, but here you go. Let me see here. Go away. So it looks like 1966, um, all the teams are gone. Um, so I think we'll play up until... Probably 1980. I think 1980 is a good cutoff, and that keeps this series from getting too long. Um, I mean, that's still, that's still, like, <laughs> over a year worth of updates, so, um, I, I think you'll probably be tired of it by the end. Um, regardless, uh, that's where we find ourselves, so. I chose the Boston Red Sox, I've said this a couple of times, but I chose the Red Sox because, first of all, this is the last team to, to integrate in real life. The last team to integrate in real life was the Boston Red Sox when they added Pumpsy Green in 1959. But also, also, 1929 is a very interesting year for Boston Red Sox fans, in particular, if you live in Boston, if you're a fan of the Red Sox, you already know what I'm talking about. What happened the year before? Which is when the owner of the Boston Red Sox decided he couldn't afford to keep the payroll and decided to sell a minor league in in unimportant player in major history named George Herman Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees. Um which did not work out for the Red Sox, I think it is safe to say. I can't really think about that. He's already gone. So our job is to make the best possible team that we can in order to take us to a championship in reasonable speed. What do we have to work with? Let's meet the 1920 Boston Red Sox. Spoiler alert, they kind of suck. You will notice if you are particularly eagle-eyed, that we have three potentially blue players. I'm also playing, by the way, on um, on uh, 20 to 80 and increments of 1. First of all, we have Wally Chang, our catcher, who is, if nothing else, an on-base machine, but is also genuinely a good player. So I'm, I'm all about Mr. Chang. We have youngster Ray Grimes, who certainly seems like he could be a really good player, potentially. Grimy, as you like to be called. And he had some pretty damn good years early, off, early on in his career, so... Yeah. And then, possibly the only player who people recognize is Harry Hooper, um, who is, of course, a Hall of Famer. I think he was. Um, a lot of this series apparently is going to be me looking people up in Baseball Reference. Um, I don't know if he is a Hall of Famer actor. I know Harry the Hat Walker is in the Hall of Fame. 
No, he's not. He he's maybe in the Hall of Really Good, but he's not in the real life Hall of Fame. So the problem is that's our stars. We also add in a couple of other decent players, and Mike Minoski is pretty decent. Um, our pitching is pretty bad. Like Wait Hoy is pretty decent, but the rest of them kind of suck. So how are we going to solve this particular issue? Well, we're going to do it with Moxie. No, I'm joking. We're not going to do it with Moxie. That would be silly. Um, We're going to integrate immediately. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this up to three. Because you don't have the minor leagues for a while yet, so this is fine. This is fine. Okay. So what positions do we most need the help at? Everett Scott isn't terrible. He's not good either, but he's not terrible. Um, I really just need everything. I'm reasonably good at first base and right field, and that's it, offensively, and catcher. And then pitching-wise, we just need everything. I'm going to limit myself to buying three players, assuming I can, and I can. I have plenty of money. Um, Let us visit the Negro Leagues. And we're going to go team by team and try to find good fits for our roster. Now, we're only going to buy three players. That's our, that's our limit. Um, we do need pitching quite badly, and Dave Brown looks like a really good fit. He does walk people, but I'm curious what a strikeout-heavy approach would do in a league when strikeouts are actually fairly rare. What's up, Cristobal Torriente? Who would be an amazing two-way player. Oh, I like you. All right, Mr. Torriente, you are my first addition. Uh, there's Buck Ewing. Um, he's a relatively famous major leaguer. I'm strongly considering Dave Brown, but I want to look at the other teams before I make any other decisions. John Beckwith is an amazing hitter. And he's super young, too. Oh, my. Mr. Beckwith would be an incredible addition to our club. I'm going to keep looking, but Beckwith is definitely on my list. I mean... Interesting. How is George Britt so good when his pitches aren't that good? Slim Branham would also be a fine choice. I think we're going to purchase George Britt. No, I don't want to do it yet. I've got to keep looking just in case. A 19-year-old pitcher that's this freaking good is terrifying. We may have to go with him. Oscar Charleston. Well now. Um, I don't think I can pass that up. Oscar Charleston is amazing. I could go for Bullet Joe Rogan.
Dick Riding is awfully good too. But I really think I like that one guy that was 19. Although Red Rhyme would be even better. I mean, the idea of getting a 19-year-old Cable starting in the major leagues, he could have a crazy long career and be one of the all-time best. So I think we have to do it. I think we're going to take Bill Holland for our third purchase. And that's all I'm purchasing, by the way. I, I, just, I deliberately don't want to overfish in the Negro Leagues because I, I want it... I want to see what other teams do. Now, I'm sure that some teams are going to buy all the players they can. Um, that's how the AI works. And, yeah. Um, let me switch over to Austin. Here we go. Um, I don't need three catchers. That's excessive. Let's add Oscar Charleston. Um... I don't need George Orn. So I Cristobal Torriente. And Hal Davini seems like he sucks. Bill Holland. Now keep in mind, we are in the era in which pitchers don't pitch every single game, but it Texas to pitch most of the team's games. Um so yeah, we've already made our team immeasurably more powerful than it was before. Let's go up to spring training day, shall we? Spring training. Oh, I need to hire some people, don't I? Um. Uh, definitely give me. What happened to the other list? I don't want a sortable list. I just want my people. What? I think it's because I don't have any minor leaguers. So it collapses it into one thing here. That's fair. Um, Let's get a team trainer. Trainer ratings, team trainer. Because I'll talk about Bob Howell, because Bob Howell isn't bad at anything, and he's really good at rehabbing leg injuries. So I think we'll go with Mr. Howell here. We'll add him along. And then I do need assistant GM. I like the idea of picking up Andre Walker. Let's get a youngster in to learn from me. And uh, and we can see how that works out. Okay. Um, let us now uh, build the roster. This is just for certain training, so I don't really care. I'm excited about this. I'm excited to see uh, where other Negro League players go. I didn't think to check free agency. Um, I should probably do that, huh? Did not even occur to me. Not even for a second. Uh, let's have a look. I mean, Lawrence Bennett is a really good pitcher, and we desperately do need... Oh, here we go. Turn off bargain shopping. That didn't actually matter. Oh, uh, yes, Lawrence Bennett. 
I'd like you to come join my team, because I definitely need more pitching depth. And who else is around? Um, Bing Miller is young. He's not a very good outfielder. Excuse me, my son is also named Borden. No, Sam Crawford's kind of is past his prime at this point. I don't really think there's a ton of value in bringing him in right now. Uh, tempting. Paul Strand wouldn't be a bad get. Um... He also used to play for Boston. That's funny. No, I don't think we're going to bother. Uh, but if I can get Lawrence Bennett, I'd feel a little bit better about our, um, our pitching stuff here. I just want to quickly see if anybody else has purchased from the minor leagues, from the Negro Leagues yet. Really? Is the AI just not going to do it? I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. Maybe they're not considered major transactions for some reason. I mean, did I inadvertently? Have I shut them out of doing it? Well, like, let's take a quick look at the Negro Leagues again. Wait, they just randomly cut Buck Ewing? What? Like, I get it, he's a terrible pitcher, but it's not what you have Buck fucking Ewing for. I will happily offer him a contract. That is super wild. That is really funny. Um, how much people have just randomly been cut? Okay, here we go. I'm looking for sold the contract. And yeah, I'm not seeing anybody else doing it. That is super bizarre. 
Um, that is not at all what I expected. For sure. Um, but okay. Let us continue forwards. Uh, we're definitely going to put Bennett on the active roster. Okay, Buck Ewing, you are never pitching. You're terrible at it. You're the worst. That is not your job. You are a catcher, homie, and you always will be. Like, why would I for even one second entertain you being a pitcher? I would not do that. Um... So yeah, Bucky boy, uh, I will place you on the active roster too. Um, oh my gosh, um, I definitely want news from my lead. Oh, let me do the thing where I turn off that nonsense. And then we'll get to building our first roster. Should be exciting. That's not great. Uh, oh, it's Harry Harper. I thought it was Harry Hooper. Okay. Shoo. We need Harry Hooper. He is of vital importance to the future success of the Boston Red Sox. Boston. Um, all right. So we're going to put you on the 15-day IL. And now let's start setting the team up the way we would like to do so. Kill it. I think we're very much in the four-man rotation era of baseball. Let's look at pitching ratings here. Bill Holland is our ace by far. Um, we're going to pitch him till his arm falls off. Then it's Mr. Hoyt. And then I think it's Mr. Bennett, um, who has actually already lost a little bit of his scouting ability, pitching ability, but that still makes him one of the better starters on the team, so... And then, Herb Pannock, I think, is going to be our fourth starter. Um, Our best reliever is Ben Kerr, or Ben Carr, rather, so I think he's going to be the stopper. And then the rest of y'all are just getting middle relievers that come in when we need you. But the expectation in this time in history is that starters pitch for most of the game. That's how it works in this period. Um, let's set up the lineup, though, which will be a far more interesting and entertaining prospect. Um, we also have to get down to 25 players, so we've got to find one more player to say goodbye to. See ya, Herb. Don't forget to write. I don't know what you're going to write, but you're going to write something. Um, right. I am to use the British vernacular proper chuffed about how good this team could potentially be. Okay. Our very best overall hitter is Oscar Charleston. The question is, do we have him bat third or fourth? And I think having him hit cleanup is more useful. There we go. Next up is Cristobal Torriente. He's the other really good hitter. And I would like him to bat third. Uh, I know how numbers work. No, I don't. Better. Um, the next card I want to slot in is Harry Hooper is 1,000% our leadoff guy. And we're going to get spicy. We're going to try something that no team of this era would have ever done. 
I'm going to make my catcher my number two hitter. I mean, he's fast enough. This is the stupidest idea, but he's also a really good on-base guy, and I think it's important to have him high in the line. Which means that Grimy here gets to bat uh, fifth. So second base, third base, shortstop. I don't have a ton of options at those positions that I really feel great about. Um, Eddie Foster is going to be our starting third baseman, I think. He's going to bat sixth. Good old... Everett Scott is going to bat 7th, and then is it Mike McNally or Cliff Brady? Cliff Brady. It's Mike McNally. Done. Lineup set. Why on earth do you want me to play Mike Minoski over Toriente when Toriente is clearly superior in every conceivable way? I don't think so, mate. Now the season is that officially started. Um Okay. I'm gonna pick organization rather than league. Um just because I don't want to get too much email. I reckon as I'm carrying three catchers, but that's fine. I don't mind that at all. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now turn on the All-Star game. Now it should properly hold it in the middle of the fucking season instead of doing it, like, today. Why can I not set when the All-Star game starts? What? I'm going to turn it on in two months. Um, oh, here we go. Now I can force it. That's what I wanted. And we're going to set it for July 1st, let's say. That feels good. Let's do it. Okay. Sorted. Done. Okay. Uh, let's play some baseball games. I'm really excited to see what this team can achieve. Um, has anybody else bought or purchased the contracts of any Negro Leaguers? Really? I don't get it. I truly don't see why the AI is not doing this. Is it a setting? But I guess it's possible that every other team is just that bloody good. And let me just triple check that I did turn off. This could just be the league doesn't know how to handle it. And that's off. Yeah, for sure. That is super weird. I wonder if they'll start doing it later on in the season. Uh, but anyways, let's play some baseball games. I'm looking at the wrong league standings. I was getting very confused. Like, where did the Boston Red Sox go? Yeah. 
Let's see. And we're just going to sim right into the next month. All right. So after two months of base falling, Toriente got a cycle. Very nice indeed. And ju this just in, this team hits really well. Like, really well. Like, Oscar Charleston casually hitting 402 is hilarious. Um, wow. But the thing is, like, let's not sit here and say, oh, it's just because Abby signed all these Negro Leaguers. This is just a really good team. Like, Harry Hooper has been doing phenomenally well. A 425 on base percentage is frankly should be illegal that he's that good at getting on base. Um, Wally Shang has been excellent. He's not a very good defensive catcher, um, but he more than makes up for with his bat. Ray Grimes, good old Grimey here. He's a bit more disappointing. Um, especially is his inability to drive the ball, but we also haven't played that many games. Remember, that's also something else that's very important to keep in mind, is the schedule in Major League Baseball in these days is just as long as it is. I don't know why we don't have more at bats for people. Are you just getting stupid? I've only played 30 games. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, It's also not even the full month of May, so that is equally fair. We can get Harry Harper back. I don't see why we wouldn't and maybe get rid of Alan Russell here. I'm going to put you on the reserve roster for right now, though. Okay, Cristobal Torriente is injured for three weeks. That's what Mike Minoski is for. You're getting your chance, kid. Don't fuck it up. Bill Holland is getting worse because his stuff is dropping, which is not a great look. Um, I don't really have much to do with the lineup or the roster to change it right now. We're just going to keep playing on until we get Toriente back. And then we're just going to slot him right back where he was. Because he's too damn good a player to not be. There you go. That's where you're going to be like, but what if we started Mike Minoski? Uh, just don't. That would be my advice to you. Just don't. Uh, copy, copy. So we just need to paste the depth chart. Everything else is fine. The only, my only complaint right now is that Oscar Charleston is a terrible center fielder. Toriente is marginally better. Yeah, we're going to do a little swappy swap here. And Oop. that is potentially one of the greatest weaknesses of this club. Even though our outfield is fantastic, they're not very good defensively. Um, that may be something that 
becomes a, big, a greater issue as we play more. Um, but, you know, so far, knock on wood, things seem to be going not terribly. Wait, Hoyt casually throws a no-hitter. Casually. Fortress speaker. Oh, we didn't look at um we didn't look at the All Star roster. Okay, so who made the all-star team? Wait Hoyt, Wally Shang. Really? None of my other outfielders are good enough to make the all-star team. I got two all-star. I mean, I guess every team does get a representative, so maybe that's not totally nuts. Hmm. Um, right. I mean, to be fair, he's not hitting over 400 anymore. Fair. Are people still not buying Negro Leaguers? I mean, look, I think I should buy at least one more. I think that's a reasonable thing to do, given the situation I find myself in. If the other teams aren't going to do it, I might as well take a little more advantage, right? Like, that should be something that I do. I desperately need better infielders, like, really bad. Nobody here. The thing is, John Beckwith isn't a very good infielder. Otherwise, he would be number one on my list. But I, I want better defensive players if I can have them. Uh, what happened to some of your better players? Um, huh. Okay, Dobie Moore looks like the winner. I think he'd be a huge asset to this, to our team here. Oh, I can't trade with the miners. Okay. Yeah, I would like to add him to our club. It may just be that it seems like Thurston is overwhelmingly and young is overwhelmingly in pitching and um Outfielders, and there's only so many of those on so many of those spots to go around, I guess. Um <clears throat> that's my thinking, but I could very well be wrong. Yeah, Cliff Brady, get fucked, nerd. This Doby Moore's second base job now. Um he instantly slots in as our number six hitter. Without hesitation.
Cool. Let me regenerate the depth chart here. Perfect. I love it. Good times, y'all. Good times. Um, let us now consider. Is there any position where we have excess talent that we could turn into better talent this year? If I traded Mike Minoski, how bare? No, the cover would be way too bare in the outfield if I traded Mike Minoski. Tim Hendricks, I think, is a far better trade option because he's not a center fielder, and I don't see him playing for us. Unless things went very, very badly indeed. So let me offer you up. Let's just see what is being offered in exchange. I don't want a reliever. That's not a thing I'm interested in. I don't need a catcher. And Walter Chair is a good defensive catcher, understood, but that's still not what I'm looking for. So anybody offering great players? I mean, Gabby Cravath would be amazing. Max Carey would be a nice acquisition in a lot of ways, but I just don't think I have the room in the outfield. Like, I'm not going to, unless I'm going to willing to trade one of my three existing outfielders, which I'm not, um, I don't really see too much value in acquiring that. I need a short, uh, Everett Scott isn't the worst shortstop. I'm fine with letting him continue to play there. Third base isn't overwhelmingly brilliant. Eddie Foster is merely acceptable. We'll have to see who might be available in the draft, though. The draft might hold the answers to one or more of our questions. Um, let's go ahead and zip on down to the trading deadline to see if things change. There's some really good players, like Hall of Famers on this list, like Max Bishop and Goose Gossett, Goose Gosselin, Lefty Grove. Did Lefty Grove play for Cincinnati? I don't remember that. Yeah, it looks like he didn't actually start in real Major League Baseball until he was with the Philadelphia Athletics. That's what I remember him pitching for. Remember him. I I do not remember him. But I, I'm a student of baseball history, and I remember the stories of Lucky Grove. But you would offer me Fred Hogg. I don't want a starting pitcher at this point. Like, my rotation is pretty damn good. I don't really think a new starter is, is what I'm looking for. But thank you for the offer, I suppose. You're definitely not getting Buck Ewing. That's not an option. I'm going to try trading uh, Hendricks one last time. The thing is, I'm exclusively being offered pitchers, and I just don't need pitchers. I'll get Casey Stangle, but I don't need an outfielder, that's for sure. Yeah, no thank you. Uh, let me reject that and laugh in your face, please. I mean, 
I don't think that's possible. Like, I don't think there's anything I could get, and he doesn't even want to be traded, so fuck you. Eddie Collins for tormenting me. Ma. Luka. I don't know why I'm looking at second base when third base is primarily the biggest area I could upgrade at. And nobody's offering a good third baseman. Eh, I like Sam Rice. I just don't think that I want to give up on any of my existing outfielders. So, uh, no, thank you. Other Boston. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any major trades. Although there have been several trades, just none for me. Um, no, this is stupid. You're stupid. While we wait, has literally anybody else added... Even one player, has even one team purchased a contract besides the Boston Red Sox. Hmm. Now starting uh in this coming draft, Negro League players should be draftable. So that should hopefully get we should hopefully see players doing a thing. Uh we're just gonna go ahead and skip. And trend of line is over. This is our team. Come hell or high water. Buck Ewing is growing quite rapidly uh, into being a really talented player, and I love to see it. How's our team chemistry? Is it good? Um, we could use a proper captain, and I'd also, we should probably get rid of Mickey Devine, actually, especially because he is kind of a jerk. Yeah. I should trade him, though. I should trade him next year, rather than fuck around with that. Uh, sure, we'll start a charity, Ben. Let's do it. Okay, we need to fix that. I'm tired of getting annoyed because of a day-to-day -day injury. We'll do severe performance drop and must be out for at least a week. Could we have enough time to potentially go on to... How did Cleveland get Grover Cleveland Alexander? What the hell? Oh, the Cubs traded him. Why? What did you give up for Grover Cleveland Alexander? Couple of fucking scrubs is what. I mean, good for Cleveland, uh, but that seems like a pretty shitty trade from the Cubs' perspective. Oh, poor Yankees. Eliminated from the playoffs. Fuck the Yankees. Oscar Charleston.
And boom, my friends, we are going to the World Series. So it turns out if you integrate the major leagues earlier, you get really great players that help you get to the World Series. Who knew? Um, getting four players seems excessive in retrospect, but on the... Oh, no. Game. I was gonna say this. Wow, this seems too easy. I should have kept my mouth shut. Uh, you can join the roster, I guess. Um, they're both terrible center fielders. Like they're both quite literally the worst. I'm gonna put Oscar Charleston back in center field, and we'll play Mike Minoski instead. Cause Lord knows I ain't fucking playing any of these scrubs in. Uh, in center field. That ain't gonna happen. Oh, that sucked. Game. Why must you torment me? Do this unspeakable evil. Because he's gonna miss the World Series. That's why I'm that's why I'm annoyed. Um he's not gonna be able to play at all in the World Series, so now who the fuck did you injure? I mean, Herb Panic has been really good for us, but I'd rather lose a starting pitcher right now, honestly, than another position player. Let's go to the postseason. Boom. My playoff roster is already set. Oh. Um. I have everyone that can be on the postseason roster on the postseason roster. That's not great. Who's the least objectionable starter if I were to choose a starter? Is it Alan Russell? I think it's Alan Russell. It's a nine-game World Series, remember. So the one thing we definitely don't want to do is burn out their arms. All right, Boston Red Sox, Cincinnati Reds. Let's go, guys. And we bring home a world championship in our first, in our first ever uh, playoff appearance. That's not a great start. That's better. A lot of that's a very tightly contested game. We're, we got to win five games if we're going to. Wow, really, Cincinnati? Wait, how is this a nine game series, but you can win it in four? What? You would need five wins to win a best of nine. Oh, there we go. Let's keep it going, gentlemen. Let's let's win more baseball games, please. Okay, it is actually five wins. Okay, I think it's just like a hard coded thing. Damn it. We were not competitive, which is what really sucks. Uh, we were absolutely not competitive. But look, Oscar Charleston completely vanished. Mike Minoski vanished. Grimes vanished. Foster, never that great. Um, man. A hundred wins. And we still could not win the World Series. But that just leaves us hungry for more next year, I guess. Um, like, I guess their pitching just dominated us. Like, how good was the Reds' pitching? Did they have, like, this incredible starting pitching staff? Their pitching is really good. Um... Oh, yeah, they have four really good starting pitchers. 
They also have a large pool pen, which I don't get, but... No, that's fair. Um, I do think our top end talent is higher than that of the red than the Reds. But what ultimately happened is my pitchers didn't get it done. Or my hitters didn't get it done. They all got cold at the exact same time. And that happens in a short series, or a longer series, I suppose. But we'll have to do better next year. We'll have to find even more talented players to baseball even better next season. Of course, Babe Ruth is still the best player in the major leagues, so it's not like... We were a really good team, but I don't necessarily see us... Um... I don't necessarily see us getting too many individual awards. Um, because of the extra explanations and everything, I'm going to end this episode here. Um, I know it's a bit on the shorter side, but there was also a bit of faffing about, so it's not too bad. Um, but I do intend to have every episode include both an off-season and the full season. So what we'll do is we'll end every episode in the off season of the next year. So it is hard for me to argue at all that we don't had that we didn't have an amazing season. Like keep in mind this is major league baseball in its earlier days. A hundred wins is really good. Uh, we've only had three teams get more than 100 wins at this point in our history. Of course, we have the incredible National League teams, but... Let's break it down. Let's see how we did and how we could potentially do better. So by war, we had a very deep team. Very, very deep. Um, none of our players were as good as Babe Ruth, but we had four players earn at least five wins, and that's insane. That is really, really good. Um, Harry Hooper was completely energized by this lineup. He got on base at a really high clip. Uh, he drove this offense in a very realistic way, and he played phen phenomenal defense. This is a guy who's probably going to want to go glove. That added a ton of value to him, but he's just a really good player at exactly where we needed him to be. Wally Chang had a fantastic season as well. And he was not a great catcher, but a good enough catcher. Enough so that I'm happy to keep him along. Oscar Charleston was really, really good, but I do have a very... I have a concern. This is that concern. So much of his power came from hitting triples. And while that's not a bad thing, triples are really, really, really hard to predict. Like year in and year out, it is challenging to predict that somebody's going to constantly hit triples. I'm hopeful he'll continue to hit at a high level. We need to be very cognizant of that, or maybe some of those triples go over the fence. Um, Doby Moore was phenomenal. Um, he really stabilized our infield. He played a great second base. You'd love to see it. Well, I say defensive rating is 55 to 60, but here it says it's 35. I am confused. Hmm. Everett Scott. Now, don't get too excited about Everett Scott. Um, he is benefiting from the shortstop position adjustment, which basically means if you're a competent player, you get a lot of rating. He's also quite good defensively, but look at all those errors. That is a possible area for concern. 
Ray Grimes might be among the more disappointing of our players, but even so, he wasn't bad. Um, but I would like to see him hit for a little bit more pop, um, hit some more doubles maybe, and that would help us be a little bit stronger. On another team, Mike Manofsky might have a much bigger role. On this one, I'm fine with him being our fourth outfielder, an occasional replacement. Now, we're, we're missing the elephant in the room which is Cristobal Torriente. If Mr. Torriente had been healthy, quit doing this game. Stop. Just quit casually turning him into a, a pitcher. Yes, he was our best, one of our best players. Maybe tied with Harry Hooper. Um, it's a shame that he got hurt when he did. Had he been in the major leagues and healthy, I think we could have been in really good shape from the World Series. But what about our pitching? How did our pitching do? Wait Hoyt was amazing. The best pitcher in the major leagues. That's a really good start. That's a really good start. Absolute rubber-armed guy who just didn't get hit. I do question his ability to pitch with control. He walked a lot of hitters, but he also struck out quite a few. Bill Holland led the league in innings pitched at the age of 19 and had a really good season too. Lawrence Bennett was a really nice free agent pickup. He really helped stabilize the rotation and give us that extra arm that we needed. Um, and then we struggled to find a, a fifth, st a fourth starter, although her pennant wasn't terrible. Certainly. Um, Mr. Pennock here was good for four war, but overall, where could we do better? Like, what should we be targeting in the draft? That's a really hard question to answer. That's a really hard question to answer. A truly great center fielder would be a lovely addition to this club. Truly would. Oh, when are we announcing the draft? Well, have already done that. Draft pool. I'm trying to remember... I can't tell if any of these guys are Negro Leaguers or not. Like, I don't recognize any of these names as being particularly famous Negro Leaguers. It just doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, you were a major leaguer too. Huh. Uh, what if we look at the Negro Leagues? Do they have a draft? Apparently you don't have a draft. So are they just adding players to, like, where are the Negro Leagues getting more players? Oh, I wonder if that's the issue. Let me quickly check the settings here. Or is there just the one draft? How did this get turned back on? 
Game. All right, you know what we're going to do? This is going to cause absolute chaos, but I think it has to happen. Um... Let me see here. Uh, all teams in Major League history. What I'm trying to figure out is who, like, the best rookies were. Um... Well, that all happened in the 1930s. When did he start? Okay, so Cool Papa Bell joined in nineteen twenty two. Willie Wells started and hmm. I'm not seeing a ton of lists of stars, which is making it difficult for me to try to figure out what the deal is here. I think it keeps getting reset for some reason. And if I go to Major League Baseball, is the color barrier back on? The color barrier is not back on. Interesting. Yeah, I can't figure out what's happened to... to Negro Leagues players. Mostly because I don't know super well. Um... Who might have been in the Negro Leagues and who might not have been. Like, none of these names ring a bell one way or the other. Um. Curious. If we take a look at the Negro League right now, do we see any drastic new players? That weren't there before. Not really. No, you were there last year too. It may just be that there aren't enough new players that join in to have like a consistent presence in the draft every year. That could be what's happening here. Um, no, you're a new player. Where did you come from? Oh, you just started on the team. Okay, that's fine. Good old long Fred. Um, were there any other people that purchased a contract? A bunch of players are tired. Interesting. 
Interesting. Um, I'm not gonna mess with this anymore. Um, if you have uh played with any league franchise or you have your own experiences, please feel free to share them in the comments. Um, but anyways, so getting back to what we need to do to improve, I think we've got a lot of stars, and I think we've got several solid players. Um, I think we need more depth in pitching. Beyond Holland and Hoyt, I don't know who I trust uh, big time. We could use... Uh, why are we playing Toby Moore shortstop all of a sudden? I guess it wouldn't be the worst there, but I'd rather play with Scott there. Um, I think we'd see the best player available, like really and truly. I don't have too many players that look like they're going to be in a decline anytime soon. Harry Hooper is the most obvious one. This is a really deep upcoming draft pool, though. Um, who is... The problem is there's 16 teams, right? There's 16 teams. There aren't 16 top prospects in this draft. Not even a little bit. There's enough good to great there's enough good players that I'm still going to get something valuable, but I'm not going to get any of the really good players. Like, they're just not going to fall to me. I just don't see that happening. Um, Lou Gehrig could end up on the Yankees again, which just seems gross to me, but I guess it's fine. I guess. Yeah. Anyways, um, we're definitely going to keep an eye on the new group leagues as things progress um, and see how they're developing and moving along. Until next time, my friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, please remember to like the video, subscribe if you are so inclined. And until next time, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.